China has deeply infiltrated Australian universities and it is luring professors and researchers to advance its military might. China cannot stop behaving like a dacoit state, one that sends spies into the academic circles and varsities of the free world, robbing them of their intellectual property and research funded by taxpayers. After the Trump administration arrested several Chinese spies in the US masquerading as research scholars, the spotlight has now shifted to Australia. China is using its Thousand Talents Plan, a CCP initiative to recruit some of the best and brightest science and technology experts around the world for zeroing in on some of the best brains in Australia's academic circles. The Chinese Communist Party is constantly trying to access technological advancements and innovations taking place in Australia on Australian taxpayers' money. The robbed technological know-how is being essentially used by Beijing for military and economic gains under Xi Jinping's civil military fusion program. China already enjoys a lot of influence within the Australian universities and academia. Australian universities are perilously over-dependent on Chinese students. Chinese students account for more than 10% of the total revenue at many Australian universities and more than 20% at the University of Sydney and the University of New South Wales. Beijing often weaponizes the dependence of Australian universities on Chinese students. Take the example of Drew Paolo, a student activist who organized an on-campus pro-Hong Kong rally last year and has also been critical of University of Queensland's links to Chinese government bodies. He was recently suspended by the university for two years. Similarly, Chinese students went up in protest recently, forcing the University of New South Wales to remove a tweet quoting a director of Human Rights Watch that was critical of China's human rights abuses. Vice-Chancellor of the University, Professor Ian Jacobs, has now apologized for his university deleting the said tweet. Chinese student groups have been a strong influence on the university campuses in Australia and they have the direct backing of the CCP and the Chinese Foreign Ministry. This has allowed Beijing to develop a nexus with some of the top Australian research scholars, professors and academicians who are now being exploited for illegitimate military gains. Security experts remain concerned because they feel that China has started using the Thousand Talents Plan to buy out technology and inventions paid for by the Australian taxpayer. Australian Strategic Policy Institute analyst Alex Josky published a report titled The China Defence Universities Tracker. According to the said report, China's Nuclear Weapons Agency too is recruiting overseas talent through the Thousand Talents Plan. According to a report published by The Australian, China recruits scientists and academicians through their colleagues, seniors or even on LinkedIn. The Thousand Talents Plan is too hard a temptation to resist. Beijing offers a second salary of more than US$150,000 per annum along with hefty research funds. All this comes on top of the money that academicians already make in their home universities. Of course, China wouldn't use every single academician or professor recruited through the Thousand Talents Plan for illegitimate military gains. Some academicians are chosen without any secrecy and many of those who get to participate with the consent of their universities are proud of their association with the Chinese program. But then several academicians do not disclose their Thousand Talents Plan affiliation to their home universities, nor do they make their surreptitious Chinese association public. In fact, in some cases, the contracts even bar the hired academicians from disclosing their participation to their very own governments. The Australian reports that these academicians keep working full-time for the Australian universities and make frequent trips to China under the concerned Thousand Talents Plan. Such academicians continue to rely on Australian grants and thus new inventions funded by Australian taxpayers end up in CCP's hands, often getting patented in China. China could use these technological advancements for commercial gains or even worse, for military and nuclear weapons purposes. Executive Director of the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, Peter Jennings, said, 
A lot of this work is essentially being militarized by Xi Jinping, taking the work of Chinese institutions and applying it to the interest of the PLA and China's intelligence services. So what was perhaps acceptable in the 90s and early 2000s now becomes a big strategic problem in the 2020s because of how China is treating these researchers and using that information. The Thousand Talents Plan remains dangerous for the free world, as the Communist Party of China has also used it for stealing American intellectual property. FBI Director Christopher Wray described it as economic espionage. This is rather dangerous at a time when China and Australia have emerged as sworn enemies of each other. China has been trying to punish Australia by imposing reckless tariffs on Australian meat and barley and exploiting its influence in Australian political circles, power sector, infrastructure and even water resources. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison himself considers China as a strategic threat and is looking to bolster his country's military firepower with a 40% hike in defence budget which will involve hypersonic weapons, anti-ship cruise missiles and submarines. However, the CCP could use the Thousand Talents Plan to steal the defence upgrades that Australia will be making. The level of secrecy involved with the program makes it doubly dangerous. When academicians themselves do not disclose their association with the Chinese program, Australian universities and the Scott Morrison government will have a hard time when it comes to insulating Australian academic circles from China. China is thus stealing Australian tech innovations and Scott Morrison must crack down on them before it gets too late.